too kind. My name is Travis Rogers. This is Talking Gauchos on Progressive Talk 1490. I'm joined now by Coach Tim Von Steed, who enters his 11th season as head coach of the Gauchos, a career mark of 140 and 56 with 20 draws. Talk about what changes once you win the national championship. You mentioned you talk about you had 198 people. You talk about taking buses to games. And, and I remember when I was a student here, we rode the little puff bus, the little airport van, all the way. We drove it all the way to Reno. I mean, it. it Talk about what changes when you win the national champion as far as exposure, as far as attendance, as far as the kids you recruit, everything. Well, I think uh, there is such a, uh, a select group of schools that have won the championship. Indiana's got seven, UCLA has four, um, you know, Maryland now has two, I think, or three, Wake Forest has a couple. So there's such a small group that, that actually are in the club. So. You know, when you actually join that club, like I said, the next day Indiana calls, the next day, right. you know, scheduling looks different, certainly recruiting looks different. Does your philosophy on scheduling change right away? Do you start going to play those teams, or as a national championship, or all of a sudden you're much more selective about the teams that you schedule? No, we, we're selective in that uh, we look to bring in big games. Uh, what, what my responsibility is, I feel, is to work really hard to bring in Indiana to UCSB. Uh, next year we have uh, Duke and UCLA at our place. Um, and it took a long time to get Duke to come out and agree. These are schools that normally don't travel west, much less play us at our sure. place. And the other thing that's happened is, you know, what's, what's been kind of fun about our crowd is the fact that we now, for the first time, will get a phone call from a place like Michigan, which we played three years ago. And Michigan called specifically because they wanted our experience. Uh, they heard about it, they saw it on TV, and they said, you know what, we want our players to experience that environment. That's Wake right. Forest was the same conversation. So all those things are, you know, you know s spin offs on that. But I, I will say this I, I think the hardest thing about winning the national championship is uh, I don't think we have had an easy game since then. Sure. Uh, Target so on your back so every time so you take the field. We're talking two to three years now of. You know, we just got done playing, you know, what a tough game down at San Diego State on Friday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way they play against somebody else and the way they look against us is always different. So, it, it, you know, I always thought that winning soccer games were pretty easy. Um, you know, early in my, you know, coaching career, I thought, you know, we could show up and not play very well sometimes. Uh, now I really feel like our team has to play well every night for us to you know, give ourselves a chance to win. Absolutely. So when you come from Sweden, and, I, and looking at the roster, there are players from literally all over the world. There are African players, there are European players, there are American players, all on your team here. Does it take a while for everybody to get on the same page, to get to know each other, or once you throw on the uniform, is everybody the same, or is there a little bit of a learning curve where you get to feel each other out a little bit? No, there's definitely a learning curve. There's definitely different styles of play. You got, you know, you, you got eight, but we have eight different... Nations? Yeah. And we have 11 international players, so it's definitely definitely um, different kinds of player that you need to bring all on the, on the same page. What, what are some of the differences? What is the difference in playing, for instance, in a European style of play or an African style of play as opposed to a North American style of play? Um, well, where I'm from, Swedish style is kind of like the English style. It's kind of direct, pretty physical. So, um, and then you have, you, you know, the Africans, they, they're, you know, great skill. Uh, really like touch the ball, play short passes, and and like dribble. So and then it kind of goes the same with the, the Mexican style of play. So and then what, what else do we have? We have Rob Hoyle from England. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same where I'm from. Joining me now is a coach in his second year as a member of the Gaucho mm -hmm. staff. He's previous, previously been at Cal State Fullerton, where he was the director of operations. He played his college basketball for Bob Thomason at UOP and had a bit of a pro career overseas in Italy, Denmark, Switzerland, and Finland. Coach Jonathan Metzger-Jones. So let's talk a little bit about the Gauchos this upcoming yes. season. Believe it or not, the season starts in just a little bit more than right six weeks. Are you guys cranking it up? Yes, we are. We're, uh, you know, NCAA rules allow us about two hours a week, so we're getting our guys in and and teaching them the offense, really uh, working hard on making sure the new guys get assimilated with the team, um, understand everything that we want to have going on. Uh, a couple of new wrinkles that we're going to put in this year offensively, so we're teaching the guys. Right now it's a lot of teaching. Okay. And that's, that's part of the fun part of coaching for me. We're really teaching, getting hands-on with the guys, and, and it's great to see how quickly they're picking stuff up. I'm pretty surprised. You obviously focus on what you have and what you don't have, but talk a minute for a second about what it's like to lose somebody like Chris Devine, who was here for about 14 years, yeah. and now he's gone. He was the center of that team. He was the, you know, the, the heart and soul of the team, and now he's gone. How difficult is he to replace? We did everything we possibly could to get him to set seventh year of eligibility, um, but it didn't work out. Uh, losing someone like him is always tough because he's such a leader by example. Every time he was on the floor in practice or games, he was giving it all, uh, leaving his heart out there on the floor, and the guys just followed that. They, they followed his lead, and um, losing someone like that is tough, but uh, 
to be honest with you, we're so excited about what we have coming back and what we have coming in that, you know, I love you, Chris, but, but this sure. is going to be a lot of fun. Now joining us is Matt Hurst, the UCSB Assistant Communications Director. We're going to talk a little bit about the soccer that we talked on earlier and everything else going on in Gaucho Athletics. Matt, welcome. Thank you. So, BOGO, what is it? It's the buzzword today. Absolutely. I just found out what it is, and it's awesome. Give it, it up. Say. Give it up. BOGO is uh, bring one, get one, and it's uh, geared to students uh, to come to a Friday night's soccer match against Indiana. Uh, if you bring a t-shirt that's not UCSB, like another college, okay. why would you even have that? I don't know. It's partially good. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. But if you bring it, we'll give you a new UCSB t-shirt in exchange for Does that Does that one. go for old, washed-up alumni as well, or absolutely, am I out of the program? Absolutely. I, I think we could get you, but I think it's mainly geared towards students. To tell me a little bit about women's volleyball. I know they had an incredible match against Irvine recently. That, that was, uh, if for Kathy Gregory to say that that's one of the greatest... Matches. She's, She's seen a lot of matches. Yeah. yeah, that's that's kind of a big deal. They were down uh, two sets and nine points in the third set, and rallied and came back and beat Irvine, which was uh, number 21 in the country. So they've they've rattled off six straight wins. Wow. Uh, most since 05. They're after their best start since 02, and uh, one of their players, Rebecca Sarcino, was named National Player of the Week, and that just that doesn't happen very often. Our last one was 04. So okay, that has to be incredibly valuable for the program. That not only do you get a conference player of the week, which is a very big deal, but to get a national player of the week kind of puts a stamp on it in front of the entire volleyball community. Absolutely. It kind of shows everyone that UCSB is back on the map in women's volleyball after a couple uh, past few years weren't up to standards, you know, I think in anyone's minds. And then to, d to do that and, and get back to where they're out 11 and 2 to start the year is uh, pretty amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Far too kind. Oh. Uh.